foundational to any effective temporary traffic management plan is your pre-planning or pre-surveying of roadways, intersections, and your involvement and, and your approach to public agencies and organizations such as your schools, your police departments, your fire departments, and of course your, your state and your county roadway departments. One of the first things that should stick out to you in this intersection is the amount of traffic that is present. This is possibly uh, peak traffic time and the first question should come to you is should we actually schedule work during peak traffic times or when traffic is this heavy? And of course your local agencies and any police department that would know this, this area, whether it be state sheriff or actual metropolitan or city police department could actually advise you on what the actual flow of traffic is and when would be peak times for traffic and when would be best times to actually do your work. So the first thing you should probably be questioning is whether this should be done in off-peak hours overnight. Uh, secondly, let's go ahead and let's start our analysis with the actual work activity area or where the workers are because the workers are our main focus. And so if you look over here to the actual work area, you can see that the workers are being protected. They are below, below level with the traffic and they are being protected by cones, which are warning or directing the traffic in the transition area. And then they're, they're being uh, protected by uh, a white metal grate or railing here. And one of the first things we have to be asking ourselves is if we're working around this heavy of a traffic, is this an adequate barricade? Because we could really reasonably predict a, a minor or a major traffic accident. And so the traffic could spill over into our work area. So should we have shielding and coverings over the work, over the workers? Should we have concrete barricades? Should we have a crash bumper truck in between the work activity area and the traffic? Doesn't look like space permits here in this area, but those are all points that you could possibly consider. The other major concern or hazard to the workers that you would have with this amount of traffic or w really around any roadway is your carbon monoxide poisoning. And so we would have to do actual air monitoring and analysis continually. Now if we look at the oncoming traffic that is com coming in and turning left and turning right that is moving at this portion of the light, we see that we have traffic that is, uh, doesn't have adequate warning that the right hand lane is going to be blocked with our activity area. And so you have traffic that is turning right and having to slow down and this is causing traffic to back up. So traffic that is going straight ahead uh, would be slowing things down. Traffic in the left-hand lane that's trying to turn left also slows the traffic down, makes a bottleneck, and all this could be handled with a proper advanced warning area and transition area that closes the right-hand lane except for right-hand turn traffic only. Of course, the problem here is that we have an uh, intersection that has inadequate engineering controls in that we really need a turn lane for this amount of traffic to be safe because now the traffic that is heading into our left-hand turning uh, traffic units uh, is either having to stop or possibly they do have a red light and, and a, a, a green turn hour and green light that work in conjunction together, whatever this may be. But you can see here that the lack of an actual advanced warning area and a transition area for the right-hand lane traffic is actually causing a bottleneck. If we turn around and we look at the oncoming traffic that's coming directly into our work activity area, you can see that the advanced warning zone does not exist. As a matter of fact, there is no warning zone until you get to the actual intersection and then you all of a sudden see that there are cones up ahead of you opposite of, of your lanes of traffic. And so now we have created a bottleneck because where the bus is sitting, if the bus is making a left-hand turn, the traffic in the right-hand lane is probably going to take the shortcut and try to scoot over and in front. So we don't have any traffic direction or traffic control, and really we don't have an advanced warning area here. And that is the, that is the concern with this. And so when we, when we don't have adequate advanced warning zones and we don't have adequate transition zones, we can expect human behavior to make a shortcut or to uh, drive erratically here, which creates a danger of an impact. If we look at traffic that is approaching 
and should be going straight and passing our work zone, we have a minor condition here with traffic that would be turning left. We would hope that we would have advanced warning light or warning signs that would say that there was work ahead. Uh, we may even possibly work with our local police departments to actually limit or not allow a left-hand turn into the work activity area from this direction of travel. This direction of travel also should have a warning zone or a warning area with warning signage, a warning that uh, you could possibly have traffic that is coming across the yellow line because anytime we have a work activity area, uh, a lot of drivers have problems driving next to concrete barricades or cones and they feel enclosed and so they end up crossing over and into other lanes. So could we or should we put cones on the double yellow line to help the oncoming traffic understand that there could be a possible hazard up and coming. So basically with this intersection we have problems with the amount of traffic. So should we even be doing this at peak times? We have specific conditions that the workers have to be protected from because due to the amount of traffic and the lack of engineering controls like turn lanes or turn lights, we really need we really have to increase our reasonable expectation of a minor traffic crash. So these type of barricades are really not adequate for protection of the workers. They need to be concrete and workers probably need to have steel covers over that open roadway so that they can work below surface. But each direction of travel has a specific hazard or unique hazard that the lack of an advanced warning zone and a, and a lack of a transition zone is actually causing or increasing the hazard of, of traffic crashes that would impact our workers. And so that's the main thing that we want to pick out with our analysis on this, this inter intersection analysis activity.